let's let's focus on the books. Um, first, okay. who is A. W. Tozer? Who A. Is w. He? Tozer was born in 1897, died in 1963, which gives the, the time frame of his life. He was born in uh, Western Pennsylvania in a country farm. He didn't like the country, so they moved into Akron. And it was while he was in Akron that he was walking to work one day in the rubber factory as a teenager and heard a street preacher. Hmm. And he was converted through that street preacher. And then he began uh, street preaching at the time. And he was part of a denominational church, and uh, the pastor took him aside and said, Now listen, now listen, we, 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 we think it's nice of you to preach on the streets, but uh, that's not the uh, uppity thing to do, you know, I'm, oh. I'm paraphrasing. You've got to have an education, you've got to have a degree in order to preach. And he was a little disappointed because he went to the eighth grade the first day and came home and told his mom, he said, you know, I think I can learn more of my own. So he was self-taught. He didn't have an education or anything of that nature. So he went down to Western uh, West Virginia to do some street meetings, and they developed a, what they called a storefront church at the time. You know, you'd, you'd move into a storefront right, or a right, church. Right. And so he was part then of the Christian and Missionary Alliance, and he was on the ordination track, you know. And so he had to be interviewed in order to be ordained. And after they interviewed him, uh, all of them said, you know, I'm not sure this guy is really qualified. <laughs> he has no education. We can't see any gifts that he has. And then one of the guys says, well, you know, he really has a heart for ministry. You know, why don't we just give him a shot? <laughs> and oh, wow. so they ordained him. And my question is this. I wonder if any of them lived long enough to see this man that they didn't think had many, many gifts right. rise to such a, a fame. Right. And so eventually he got into Chicago and the, the church there. He turned a, a church that was meeting in a garage into one of the, one of the big churches in Chicago at the time. And uh, he, was, he was a man who was really focused on God. Uh, back in those days on the train, they had the Pullman cars. And he would, he would get on uh, the train in Chicago and ride west for four hours and meet in and, and get into a Pullman car. And he said it cost extra, but he said it was worth it. And he would spend those four hours on his knees with an open Bible before God. And then he'd get that point, and then he would turn around and do the same thing coming back. So he had eight hours, no interruption, where he was absolutely focused on God. Hmm. His, his uh, uh, work that is, is he's most known for is The Pursuit of God, which is a classic devotional. It was published in the 40s. And he was going to go down to Texas uh, to, uh, to a conference that he was speaking at. He got a Pullman car, and he got in there, and he began writing. And uh, there was a lot of things that was on his mind at this time, some sermons that he had preached. By the time he got to his destination uh, in two days, I guess it took two days to get there, he had the first draft of The Pursuit of God, which is now a devotional classic. You know, so here was a man who was so utterly focused on God that nothing else really mattered. And the thing that, that connects with people is he, he wasn't a denomination. You know, we have Calvinists on one hand, and we have Arminians on the other hand. And, you know, you, can't, you can work without one hand, but you can't clap, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, and, you know, he rose above all of these uh, divisionary distinctions, you know, and said that Christianity is not a little club here and a little club there. Right, right. And so he rose above all of that kind of stuff. And he really spoke and ministered to the hearts of people. One of his favorite writers was St. Augustine. Uh, and St. Augustine says in his opening book, he says, uh, Thou, O God, has created us for thyself, and we are restless until we rest in thee. And that sort of summed up uh, the whole life of A.W. Tozer. There was a restlessness in his heart that only God could satisfy. And all of his writings and his speakings and all of that address that theme. He died in 1963. I have about 600 of his uh, sermons, and I'm putting them into book form. I often get the question, which is, what would A.W. Tozer say today if he was living? And, and I remember what my uncle said when someone asked him, what is your favorite uh, 
uh, pie, and he always said uh, the one I'm eating at the time. <laughs> and uh, what I would always say is that Dr. Tozer would say today what he said back then, because what he was talking about back then and preaching and teaching back then was the essentials of the Christian life. Not to, not to flab around the corner, but the essentials. Right, the and sometimes I'm, I'm doing, working on a sermon, and I'm, I'm sitting back and saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's, he preached this in 1957. How did he know what life would be like here in 2013? That's you know? interesting. That because is he, th there are certain truths that never change. And, and one of his sayings was this, if it's new, it's not true. And if it's true, it's not new, <laughs> you see. And so if you, if you focus on truth, truth never changes, you know. I love that. And so that, that was the, the passion of his heart, and, and, and he drew people. Most people did not know that he was part of the Christian Missionary Alliance because he never talked about it.